Okay, so let's talk about Turo. I know a lot of people are interested in Turo. I even got a request to make this video. Shout out to the viewer who requested this video. So anyhow, you guys, I want to talk to you guys about the Turo platform. If you're not familiar with Turo, it is Airbnb, but for cars. It essentially allows you to share your vehicle with others. Now, some of us who are a little bit more enterprising like myself, we've purchased vehicles that are specifically for the Turo platform. I don't use my personal vehicle for Turo just because, I don't know, I'm a little weird that way. I don't like people using my personal stuff. So anyhow, I have a couple of vehicles on the Turo platform and on average I make anywhere from about $1,500 to $3,000 a month during doing Turo. So there's a couple things you have to consider when you think about your earnings on Turo. If you have a car note, you want to factor that into your earnings. If you have insurance, which you should have insurance on that vehicle, you want to factor that into your earnings. Uh, the gas it costs you to get the vehicle to the customer, you want to factor that into your earnings. The car washes, you want to factor that into your earnings. The oil changes, you want to factor that into your earnings. So you definitely want to make sure that you are taking a comprehensive look at what the bottom line may entail as far as costs go when considering purchasing a vehicle or even using your own vehicle on the Turo platform. You also want to think about how you, if you're single or doing this independently, if your customer wants a vehicle at the airport, how are you going to get to and from the airport? Obviously, if you're dropping off a vehicle, you have your way to get there. Now you have to figure out how to get back. So for me, I typically use either Uber or Lyft and I charge a $100 delivery fee to get me to and from the airport because you have to get back to the airport to pick the vehicle up once the reservation ends. And I don't like inconveniencing friends and family and asking them to drop me off or pick me up. So I like to be pretty autonomous. Is pretty independent and the way that I do that is by charging a hundred dollar delivery fee so that I'm able to get to and from the airport without it affecting my bottom line and this is something you want to be conscious of because on my first few reservations I made the mistake of not charging a delivery fee and did not make what I should have made because I had to pay for my own transportation to or from to and from but I learned from that mistake very very quickly now here's something I do want you to understand. If you are looking for passive income, Turo is not it. This is not passive income. You definitely have to be active when you're making this income because you have to think about it. The car will need to be detailed. Could you pay someone to do that? Absolutely, but it's taking money right out of your pocket. The car has to be delivered. Could you pay someone to do that? Absolutely, but it's taking money right out of your pocket. Up until the point that you've scaled your business to maybe five or six vehicles, you need to be the one in the trenches doing the work yourself. So very often when you're starting out on Turo and you have maybe anywhere from one to maybe four vehicles you should be doing the lion's share of the work otherwise you're basically creating a business for someone else to profit everyone that is being paid is making the profit off of the business and you are not so uh, if you're looking for passive income once again Turo is not it because you need to be present as the business owner but once you've scaled the business and you have multiple cars you should be able to step back and delegate some of those responsibilities I don't know that Turo will ever become completely passive but it should at some point become passive-esque let's talk about what type of vehicle to get this is the decision that gives a lot of people analysis paralysis because they're confused about the type of vehicle that they should get and one of the things i want to say is just get a vehicle any vehicle just get one just start right uh, make sure that you get a vehicle that has a monthly payment that you can afford if you're deciding to purchase a vehicle so whether you have it in Turo or not just make sure you get something that is within your budget so when I was considering doing Turo, I kept hearing tons and tons of horror stories about vehicles being stolen, vehicles being abused. I think I saw a news story of a guy going airborne in a Tesla out in California from a vehicle that he had rented on Turo. And so when I would read those stories or see those stories, it would definitely put the fear of God in me as it related to starting a business on Turo. So one thing I started to notice that the common thread in a lot of the horror stories that I was hearing was that these were either luxury or high performance vehicles. So I mean, I'm talking Camaros, Teslas. Uh, Mercedes, um, anything that's high end, you would see a lot of those vehicles either being damaged or stolen because those vehicles tended to attract daredevils and their dwells, right? Daredevils and troublemakers. And so, one of the things that came to light for me was okay, I'm just going to stay away from those types of vehicles. And I decided that I wanted to do minivans. Now, the thing about minivans is I'm going to attract families primarily, and I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a whole lot of moms doing donuts in a soccer van. So for me, it felt a lot safer. And I think a lot of people would be shocked to know that even though it's not the sexiest of vehicles, I literally cannot keep my minivans in stock. They are constantly being rented for corporate trips, for family trips. Like There are definitely a lot of instances where minivans come in handy and customers are clamoring for them. Now, if you do decide to go with a high-end vehicle, you can probably make upwards of $250 $300 for your rental so you can make more by going that route and there are also safety mechanisms that you can put in place that will help to reduce the 
chances of your vehicle being stolen you know all sorts of tracking devices that you can put on your vehicles i haven't taken the time to do that because again i have the luxury of having minivans and most moms aren't out here you know committing grand theft auto so it works out for me now i will tell you one of the biggest issues that you will have with minivans is cleanliness so people will pack their dogs in there even though you have a no dog policy you know kids are messy so they're going to spill food and drink in every possible crevice so there will be a lot of cleaning and detailing with the minivan but again and you don't have to worry about it being stolen or damaged to the degree that you will have to worry about a lot of these luxury vehicles. I hope this information has been helpful to you. If you are thinking about starting to row and you have additional questions for me that weren't answered in this video, definitely post them in the comments below. I'm very active in the comments. And if you are a fellow Toro business, I'd love to hear for your input, hear your experience on the Toro platform as well. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.